The dark night of the soul comes when you realize that life and existence itself are inherently meaningless and full of unavoidable suffering. This realization can be either extremely terrifying or extremely liberating. People have a funny way of polarizing. They'll say things like, what's the point of doing anything anyways? None of it's real. And on the other side of the coin, they'll say something like, if this is all imaginary, then what the hell am I so afraid of? What's all this stress and anxiety for? Time to drop that shit. I'm going to express myself now. The dark night of the soul happens when you miss the what's there to fear turn off and you end up going straight into the swamp. And I got to tell you, even though plenty of people who took this path before me warned about how easy it is to miss the liberation turn off, I still missed the damn turn off and ended up in the swamp. Coming from the direction that we're coming from, at the speed we're going, it seems damn near impossible to not miss that exit. It's almost as if you have to miss the exit, get to the swamp, realize the swamp is no place to be, then realize there's more than one path to liberation, they're all over in fact, if you can just make it out of the damn swamp. Now here's the tricky part. If you want to become one with the Force, like Luke Skywalker, you must go to the Dagobah system and spend some time in the swamp. That is where you will learn to trust your intuition and all those funny sensations inside of you that you can't quite make sense of yet. To make it out of the swamp, you'll have to learn how to listen to your intuition, pick a direction, and stay the course. The problem with being in the swamp is that your old compass no longer works. You've evolved and realized there are more important things in life than doing whatever the hell it was you were doing before. But you still have these old habituations and thought patterns, and this old intuition that's driving you towards your old compass heading, which is not where you want to go anymore. You have a new direction you're trying to head in, but you no longer have a compass to point you in the right direction. You may be looking around for a new compass that's analytical and objective like your old compass, the one you're familiar with, one that you can explain to people. See, your old compass had you saying things like, I want to work in such and such a field so I can help people and make a bunch of money. You can explain that to people and have them nod in agreement. That makes sense to them. Your new compass is not analytical and can't be explained with words so well. Your new compass is your intuition, which is why it might be hard for you to find it if you're looking for logical next steps that are complete with full explanations that make sense to you, your overly dominant analytical mind, and everyone else. Your intuition might drive you somewhere that's hard to explain to other people, like out into the middle of the woods by yourself to reconnect with nature, take a higher perspective on your life, reflect on things. Oftentimes your intuition will drive you towards information gathering activities that will help paint a picture for you and make your next move a more obvious and easiest deci easier decision to make. These information gathering activities often look like failure and nonsense to other people. So if you're overly concerned with what other people think, you'll have a hard time with these steps in the evolutionary process. Big decisions can be hard to make. But gathering information through the experiences that your intuition calls you to can help you with these big decisions. The way people get stuck in the swamp is with self-doubt and uncertainty. They'll start going the right direction to get out of the swamp, then they'll stop and say, hold on a second, this can't be right, maybe I should try going the other direction, and then back and forth they go. The evolution of the mind that needs to happen while you struggle in the swamp is to evolve into a mind that has more belief in itself and its intuitive decisions because it realizes that it has to pick a direction and stay the course. The habituation of the mind seeing things as negative and getting stuck on them is a very hard habituation to break. I think the only way to break or to avoid the dark night is to somehow break this habituation beforehand which is not easy to do. The whole reason you're trying to bring about an awakening experience is to evolve the mind, is to evolve the way that your mind works so it doesn't get stuck in this kind of stuff anymore and you finally learn how to let go of pain, let go of painful memories and painful ideas. It's a pick yourself up by the bootstraps kind of situation. The way out of the swamp is learning to let go of the negative thought loops and habituations that are keeping you stuck in there wandering around in circles. The way out of the swamp is to drop the self-doubt and uncertainty, calibrate your intuition, and learn how to follow it out. When your intuition helps you make it out, you'll understand and trust your intuition a lot more, which is a big part of your consciousness evolving. The dark night often comes when you realize the stuff you thought you knew for sure turns out to not be true. 
Again, this can be terrifying, devastating, and frustrating. You can dig yourself in deeper with these kinds of thoughts and feelings swirling around in your head. You have to learn how to take control of your own mind and insist that it hold a different, more liberating, more positive and constructive perspective in order to find your way out and use your newly acquired superpower to go change the world or make an awesome pot of chili or do whatever it is you're trying to do. Smaller awakenings happen when you confirm something that you thought was true. The larger awakenings happen when you realize not only were you wrong, but you can't possibly be right from the position you're in right now. If you can articulate your perspective with words, it's probably not complete. What's there to be right about when making a statement about infinite consciousness? Imagination is everything? There's a good Einstein quote for you. About the only accurate statement you can make is that the one interconnected thing that makes up all things does exist, but even that is based on perspective, experience, and intuition, which has already failed us before. The known cannot know the unknown. That's the paradox. The finite cannot know exactly how the infinite works and hold that image in its finite ego mind. This process you might be going through is also known as a paradigm shift or an evolution of consciousness. The bubble of imagined certainty you've been living in pops and you come to understand the paradox of knowledge at a whole new level. The more you know, the more you realize you don't know. That's the paradox of knowledge. You may realize it's not actually possible to know anything for certain here. You'll feel like you do, but you'll recognize this as the same position you were in before your head exploded. It can be very painful trying to share your new perspective with your friends, family, and the world at large because they're in their own bubbles of imagined certainty just like you were. They're walking around thinking they know who they are and how things work here. Don't obsess over trying to get these people to understand you. They can't from their current position in life. They would need experiences like the ones you had to form a perspective similar to yours. You're God. You're the one thing that's beyond words. Stop trying to explain yourself to people if it's frustrating you. I do it because it's a challenge I enjoy and it's part of my life journey. Your purpose and journey are probably different than mine. You don't need to be understood by other people at the deepest level. It sure is a wonderful fantasy, but it certainly is not for everyone. The fact of the matter is that the more evolved you are, the harder and more unlikely it'll be for other people to understand you. When you're one step ahead of other people, you look like a genius. When you're two steps ahead of other people, you look like a madman. You absolutely should connect and seek as much understanding and commonality as you can, but don't delude yourself into thinking that people, even those close to you, are going to understand everything about you and how you're living your life. A paradigm shift is a painful time, full of doubt and uncertainty, and it's not uncommon to lose interest in life. What's the point of doing anything if it's all meaningless and it can all turn out to be wrong or, or wasted effort? What's the point of doing anything in a dream if you're just going to wake up from it? And this is where we learn to start enjoying the dream, or the game for what it is. Video games are obviously not real, yet people still seem to enjoy playing those. In fact, many people think games are more interesting and more fun than real life, don't they? These gamers are catching on to an important point that you might be missing. You can still have a great time, even if you know it's not real. People still love watching movies and playing video games, even though they're obviously not real. When you're watching a movie, are you sitting there going, Oh, come on. This is not even real. He doesn't even talk that way in real life. What is this? Is that what you do? Or do you allow yourself to slip into the experience? Perhaps you might allow yourself to feel like you're there or feel like you're one of the characters. To enjoy the movie, you turn off a lot of other stuff that you know, like the fact that you're sitting in a theater that would otherwise be pretty boring without all this fake stuff going on. So you allow yourself to slip into the experience and enjoy it. The dark night of the soul is a transition process from the old you to the new evolved you. You'll have new insights and ideals that you've awakened to, you may even be far enough down the road that you know what you need to do, but your old habituations and beliefs are still supporting you because you've got one foot on that old stepping stone still. You'll experience doubt and fear about letting go of your previous stepping stone and stepping into what feels like groundlessness. So yes, life is meaningless 
and existence is groundless. It means there's no point to all of this. It means you can make up whatever meaning and whatever point you want, and you can approach life however you like. What's the meaning of a video game? Again, there's no meaning there, but people still seem to enjoy playing video games. That's what life is about, playing a meaningless game and finding joy in it. Come up with your own meaning on the way. You can be as altruistic as you want with your meaning, but in the end, it all boils down to feeling good. That's what everyone wants and is working towards through direct and indirect means. Remember that it's a world of mirrors, so if you put out negative energy, it's reflected back, either directly or indirectly. What is it you're looking for in life anyways? Are love, acceptance, and understanding on your list? Project those outward if you want to receive and experience them yourself. All your fears, doubts, and frustrations as you go through the dark night are part of the transition process. It's painful as the old you acknowledges weaknesses and shortcomings, then dies, and a new evolved version of you is born. It truly is a transformation and evolution of your psychology, and it really is remarkable. It's beyond words. All of your evolutions in life so far have probably not involved starting from scratch, rethinking everything you thought was true, and building a better operating system from the ground up. As you've been moving through life, you've probably been making incremental improvements to your consciousness and the way that you think and operate. You've been going from U version 1.0 to U version 1.1, and then version 1.2, and so on, in incremental linear fashion. A major awakening experience combined with integration, or evolving your operating system to make it through the swamp, is making an exponential leap forward to U version 2.0. When your evolution is complete, you'll have a new operating system, a new perspective on life, and these two things are so starkly different that it's difficult, if not impossible, to make a smooth transition. If you've already started, this is a process you have to confront. If you avoid it, you prolong it. You can confront it by building up your practice of sitting and letting go. That's what makes this whole transition so painful, attachment to your old self, your old habituations, and your old beliefs. Deliberate practice of letting go of the old is the way. Combine that with experiments in trusting your newly developing intuition. It'll make mistakes in the beginning, which is fine. Even the mistakes are part of the process and necessary for your compass calibration. When, you tra when your transition is complete, your intuitive compass heading will guide you right towards the things that you need to be doing to gain experience and perspective, which will help make your next move a no-brainer. There won't be any doubt or uncertainty once you've worked out the kinks and established a track record for yourself. Recognize that this is a process and that trying to shortcut it leads to problems down the road. Recognize that you're no longer a caterpillar and you're not quite a butterfly yet. You're something in between. Recognize that a complete metamorphosis into a butterfly is entirely in the cards for you and is actually the most natural next step. Recognize that you're closer to your evolution right now than you've ever been before in your entire life.